Coming up on the Sports Desk, Pioneer League play is officially underway on the hardwood and pitch. It's the Taunts Civil War between the Saxons and Spartans, plus the West Warriors and Taunts Todd is also duking it out. And of course, I'll get you more highlights from the hardwood, the pitch, and plenty more marinara sauce. Get ready for a boom sauce bomb filled show coming up right now. What's up, Torrance? Welcome to another jam-packed episode here on the Sports Desk. I'm Colin Kushner. In the Twitter universe, hit me up. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag BoomSauce. I have one name for you, Derek, or as I like to call him, Rick Henry. Big Rick galloped for 158 yards and three scores in Bama's roll tie dub over the Clemson Tigers in the championship game. All I have to say is Christian McCaffrey who? Cue it up! All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind. I can never get enough. Yeah, I feel like my singing slash rapping just gets progressively worse. But all I do is win is Bishop's theme song. The Knights finally getting some home court love. They're essentially the high school version of the Golden State Warriors before Golden State lost. The black gold 14-0 on the season before date night with Narbonne. They haven't lost the Gaucho since 2011, so that's five straight. Would they have the jitters in their first home game of the new season? After winning 14 straight going into this one, doubtful. Bishop Montgomery averaging 69 points per game in their last five dubs over Narbon. Let's go to the first quarter. Knights up 3-0. Ethan Thompson causes the steal. Jordan Shackle dishes. Then the, uh, David Singleton for three. Good. Uh, Bishop up 6-0. You'll hear more from Singleton a little later on. A few minutes later, same exact score. The Bishop D was on point in this one, though. Jordan Shackle with the steal, and he's like, I'm going to take it all the way to the hole, and he gets fouled. Shackle would nail the ensuing free throw. Uh, the Knights grooving early. And then still in the first, more great defense from Bishop Montgomery. David Singleton intercepts the pass all the way to the rack, off the glass, and good. He makes it look so easy. He's on fire, and so are the Knights. 18 to 6 after one, and then in the second, Bishop up by 12. David Singleton, boom sauce! Singleton goes over the top of the Narbonne player. That's Dominic Peterson, the Bishop student section, loving it. Let's take another look. Singleton up, posterized! Oh my god, the crowd's loving that. Uh, Knights win, 82 46. Just like Golden State, the Knights win again, and there's no surprise there. That's now six straight wins over the Gauchos. And in their next game at the Westchester Challenge, it really wasn't much of a challenge. The Knights get by Long Beach Poly 59 to 47. That's now 16 wins with donuts in the loss column. Bishop on fire. Let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison of the NBA's Golden State Warriors and one of the top nations prep basketball programs, the Bishop Montgomery Knights. The Golden State Warriors won 24 straight before losing their first game of the season to the lowly Milwaukee Bucks. Here's a look at both teams through their first 16 wins. Bishop Montgomery averaging over 68 points per game, while Golden State over 114 points. Bishop Montgomery holding their opponents to just under 45, while Golden State is at just under 99. Remember, Prep basketball has shorter quarters in the NBA. Oh, the American Civil War. Just talking about it makes me feel like I am back in my seventh grade history class. History says North won the American Civil War. That's true, except I'm not talking about General Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee. On the other hand, the Torrance Civil War goes a little bit like this. South swept the season series with North just one year ago, which means the Saxons haven't won a Civil War game in the hardwood since turn down for what was popping off. Yeah, that was back in 2014, so just two years ago now. It's the first Civil War game of 2016 on the hardwood. Uh, South averaged 79 points in their two dubs over North just one year ago. Coach Dupron wearing the black trackie. Uh, first quarter, South number one. Jordan Tang to Joel Katsumata. Uh, that's goaltending. Let's take another look at this play, though. Jordan Tang looks like he has eyes in the back of his head for this one. Whoop! And then Katsumata 
But yeah, uh, nice play. South up, final minute of the first quarter. Uh, Isaiah Cadogan, all the way, reverse layup goes. South up by one after one into the second. North starts to pull away. Isaiah Holmes misses, but Tyler Johnson's like, hey, brother, I got your back. North up by a point here. And then a few possessions later, same score. Uh, Chris Anayim for three land, no. Alex Iziani, no. Tyler Johnson, no. Iziani, yes. North up 19 to 16. They hang on to win, 62 to 52. So history is back on track. North finally gets a win over South after going one full year with two big L's. The last time the Saxons won the first game of the Civil War Series, they went on to sweep the season series with the Green Squad. The Saxons feeling good after the huge Pioneer League opener against South, but just like any good parte, the good vibes come to a screeching halt. Culver City drops North 96 to 90. The loss snaps the Saxons two game dub streak over CC. Now, current tie to head coach Paul Nataki has some West Torrance ties. The former West standout also coached the Warriors for three seasons. He helped the struggling West program take three straight trips to the CIF playoffs. One of those journeys, the CIF quarterfinals. But after three seasons, coach packed up his whiteboard and whistle and took the just under four mile trek to Torrance High to, to become their head coach. He turned a five win Tata squad into a playoff team and has done so in each of his first two years. It's safe to say Nataki has the magic touch. Well, kind of, in his first game against his alma mater, Torrance lost. Fast forward to the following year, the two teams banana split the series. West averaged 49, or averaging 49 points in their two games with Torrance last year. The Tatas, just about 46. Noah Carroll, give me some love. Jonathan Atkinson, let's do a couple of high fives and we'll salute each other. First quarter, West clinging into the one point lead. Nick Snyder pull up Jay. Good, West up by three. And then to the second, West still in control 24 to 17. Uh, but first we're gonna see the cheerleaders do some of their stuff. Now here we go, Justin Height. He's gonna go inside, sees nothing. Then he's gonna feed to his boy, Alex Mishaw, who goes off the glass and in 26 to 17 Warriors. And then late in the third, Torrance starts to pour it on here. Jerome Duhon, he's gonna take this, pulls up from the corner, deuce, that's good. The Tartars take the one point lead. And then the fourth, Torrance is still up and Giovanni Jackson, he stops and he dribbles and takes it all the way to the rack. Jackson, what a move, goes around the entire West defense there. He had himself a night and then Evan Mejia with the steal then. Giovanni Jackson, slam a jamma! That's good, the one-handed finish. Uh, Todd has come back to down west, 52 to 42. So the Todd has go ham sauce on west late in the game to come out with a huge Pioneer League opener dub. Uh, how about that Geo Jackson slam dunk, which probably took the win out of the entire west gym. Now, same sport, different gender. The Torrance boys took down west. The Torrance girls, I'm not going to spoil it for you just yet. On February 19th, 2011, the West Warriors and Torrance Tartars met up in the first round of the CIF Division III AA playoffs. Torrance won, Torrance won. Follow me here because it's been six consecutive losses for the Tartars since, until now, maybe or not. West averaging just over 55 points in their last six wins over the Tartars. Under two to go in the first, 10 all. Haley Tanabe, or excuse me, not Tanabe, but the ball's gonna go to Haley Jones. She goes and one, nails the free throw, easy, 13-10 Warriors. Into the second, 21-12 West, Haley Jones. She misses, uh, and then she's gonna collect her own rebound, and uh, Dakota Jones is like, I got you. Uh, they're just jonesing it up. That's two of her 15 points on the night, and then it's just a parte for West from there. Kristen Tachiyama, the layup is good. West in the driver's seat heading into the break, into the second half was all Warriors, you guessed it. Haley Jones misses, but then gets it and puts it home. And then Haley Tanabe and the Joneses, they do some work, Tanabe nice moves, uh, inside, off the glass, and good. West goes MC Hammer on Torrance, 70 to 35. Excuse me, make that seven on straight for the Warriors over Torrance. West's dominance over the Tigers continues, and Torrance's struggles against West I feel like uh, it's like the I-10 East freeway at 3 a.m. Quite scary. The Warriors, 35-point dub ties their biggest margin of victory over Torrance, which was 35 during the 2013-2014 school year. 
craziest part of all, both squads weren't even in the same league then. Now it's time for hashtag crunching the numbers part one here on the show. Towards some West, it's been pretty lopsided. As I said just moments ago, Torrance hasn't won a game against West since February 2011. And since, it's been all Warriors. Seven straight wins, averaging just under 60 points, with an average margin of victory of just over 24. That means each of West's seven wins have been by double digits. Their lowest margin of victory, just 10 points. Yikes. But hey now, Torrance hops back in the saddle with a huge 17-point win over La Quinta, the Tatas, back in the dub column. It's the Civil War, a pot due on the hardwood. The North won the actual historical Civil War back in 1865. I keep hammering this in your head just in case you go on Jeopardy and they ask you the year the Civil War ended. You can thank me later if that actually happens. North boys hoops won. The North girls swept the Civil War series with South just one year ago. Both schools went on to capture CIF Southern Section titles. The two haven't squared off since they received their CIF bling bling until now. North averaged just over 48.5 points in their series sweep over South just last year. Uh-oh, Christy Takahashi get pumped. Late in the second quarter, 21 all. Carissa Denman for South pulls up for three. South takes a 24-21 lead in the re into the recess break. And into the third, North up by point. Kelly Ogata, uh, she's gotta. She picks it off, off the glass, easy laying. She misses the free throw though, North up by three. And then later in the third, the Saxons, well, they're clinging to the one point lead here. Brittany McPherson slows it down, kind of does what Giovanni Jackson did in a previous highlight and gets it off the glass to go. Easy land, Saxon's up by three. And then in the fourth, North is starting to pull away from here. Megan Takata pulls up from three point land. She's got it. And then Megan Takata, well, she's gonna do uh, this. Off the glass floater, good. Uh, that's another nine point lead. They aren't looking back. Saxon's take it, 66, 51. I haven't dropped this line in a while. ABC, it's easy as one, two, three. You can thank the Jackson Five for that, meaning North has now won three in a row over coach Bobby Imamura in Co. Let's hear from Megan Takata and Kelly Ogata on what it's like playing against their rivals, the South Spartans. Yeah, it's good to see like um, people you've grown up with like all your life and stuff. And yeah, it's like a good rivalry. It's really fun going against friends I know. And even though we're like friends off the court, we're still rivalries on the court. Thanks, girls. You can call me the Elias Sports Bureau of City Cable. That's what ESPN uses for all their statistical analysis. Since 2010, uh, the 2011 season, the North Saxons and South Spartans have met up for date night on the hardwood 11 times. Out of their 11 dinner and a movie dates, the Saxons have won seven of those 11 games, which leaves South with just four. North has averaged just over 48 points in those 11 games, while South has averaged 41 points. When it comes to average margin of victory, North killing it with just under 15 points in their seven wins. South, their four wins just under seven. That's a lot of math I just did there. And after South's hard fought Civil War battle with North on the hardwood, the Green Squad grabbed the protein bar and some Gatorade to recharge the batteries. South gets back on track with a five point win over St. Paul. So South had another game, uh, North they did too, except it was against Orange County Power Modern Day. The Monarchs are pretty much the best at every sport, football, basketball, soccer, you name it. They have probably won a CIF banner at some point. After North's big Pioneer League opener dub over South, they already made one statement. Now it was time for their second in a row to show that they still had their CIF Southern Section crown swag. North and Modern Day played last year. The end result wasn't good. The Saxons fell to Modern Day 74 to 31 just last year. There's Coach getting her girls pumped up early to the first quarter. Two nothing sucks on's up early. McKenna Itamoto, she's gonna pull up for three from the corner. Money in the bank, North up 5 nothing. Then the very next North offensive possession, Kelly Ogata, similar spot, just a little bit closer. She nails it. Saxon's feeling it early. That's a 7-0 run to start the game. But then to the second quarter, 15-10 North, Modern Day starts to take over from here. Uh, and when I say take over from here, I really mean it when I say that. Marina Lapuza pulls up for three. Good. 
Uh, North only up by two now. And then Emma Torbert, she pulls up for a deep two. And she gets that to go. It's 15 all. And then Megan Takata is going to pull up for three here. Bricks that. And then Modern Day, well, she's going to rip it away. They're going to dribble up. And they're going to get a couple more points. Modern Day goes on a 17-0 run. And North only scores five points in the quarter. Modern Day rolls in this one. So Modern Day lays down the hammer on the Saxons with the 37 point dub. This is the second year in a row these two teams have met up and also the second year in a row Modern Day has gone ham sauce. For the Monarchs that's 142 points scored in two games. For the Saxons that's two straight games of 31 points when playing the Monarchs. That's not good. Staying on the hardwood after a huge win over Redondo Union, the Bishop Montgomery Knights fall to Los Alamitos in their next game, 65 to 61. But some history was made in the process. Junior Jessica Malazarte becomes the 11th player in history in the history of the Bishop Montgomery Girls basketball program to drop at least 1,000 dimes, meaning 1,000 or more points, joining the exclusive club, the 1,000 Point Club. Two mo uh, the two most recent Knights to do it, Christine Delapina. And Chelsea Lighty just last year. Boom sauce. Congrats, Jessica. Okay, Malazarde just joined the 1,000 point club, and I'm still looking to make my first basket ever. When we get back, Pioneer League play is officially underway on the pitch. The West girls and Torrance girls battling it out at Zamparini Plus. It's the Civil War, part three and four. Don't even think about it. getting off the couch. Yep, he just made a mistake. There he goes. Everywhere that we go, he makes people laugh and makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. We have the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. Hey, yo! Welcome back, everybody. Hit me up on Twitter, showing your school spirit. I'll get you right here on the show. Both West and Torrance met up on the hardwood twice to open up Pioneer League play. I guess nothing says Happy New Year like a good old Torrance area rivalry. On the pitch, though, Torrance girls soccer has struggled against West over the years, and that's a light sauce for you. West, on the other hand, well, since joining the Pioneer League just last year, they haven't lost to Torrance. And if we go way back into the good old history books, the closest thing Torrance has had to a win against West was a 1-1 tie. West outscored Torrance 4-1 in their last three meetings that took place just last year. Hey, there's Coach giving her players a nice little pep talk. Oh, the refs. Oh, hey, man, how you doing? Oh, I'm good, bro. How are you? I, you know, I'm ready for this game going. Uh, the refs are hanging out. First half, no score. Alicia Sloss dribbles up. And then Ruth Soto, big save. And then... She makes the save, and she's not even looking at the ball, finally swallows it up. Still nil-nil. Later in the first half, still no score, though. Scoring opportunity for Wes. No. Kimmy Butland. Kimmy Butland. She's offside. It's close call, though. Still nil-nil. And then in the first, same score. Crazy play. Uh, that goes off the Torrance player into the net, but that's into their own goal. That's a West goal. They go up 1-0, and West wins a wild one. 3-2. The Tadas muster more than one goal, but West three back of the net bombs too much to handle in this one. It's time for hashtag crunching the numbers. The first time on the pitch this year, though. West and Torrance have gone up against each other five times in the last two and a half seasons. The Warriors have scored eight goals with a 4-0-1 record, while the Tadas, it's a complete 360 McTwist. Let's play the opposite game. They are 0-4-1 with just three goals. 2006 was quite the year. Barry Bonds passed Babe Ruth for second on the all-time home runs list. Sean Paul's temperature was number two on the top 100 billboards. And Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, was the highest grossing film. 
It was also another movie that Johnny Depp looked creepy in. Three days before the new year, or 2007, North and South met up on the pitch for the first time that particular year. North won a thriller and penalty kicks 2-1 at the Harbor Cup. That's also the last time the North Saxons beat South, according to MaxPreps.com. The Spartans outscored North last year 6-3 in their season sweep over the Saxons. Second half, North up 2-0. South's Gabriel Stratton, no. Close, but no cigar. And then another scoring chance for South. Taylor Harris, dribble, dribble. That's going north of the border to British Columbia. And then good D by North here. South chance over the net. Deflects off a player, uh, but... The South, they just can't get anything going. Two first half goals is all North needs. Saxons take it. 2 0. North wins. North wins. North wins. Whoa, Nelly. The Saxons finally take down South. And when I say finally, I mean that in the most literal way possible. Not a bad way to begin the fun of Pioneer League play for North. The win gives the Blue Crew 11 on the year. That already ties last year's total win output. Here's why the win for North was so big. They haven't taken down South since December of 2006. A lot has happened since. Take Barack Obama being elected the first African-American president of the United States. The Kansas City Royals went from one of baseball's worst to World Series champs. And how could we ever forget the Manti Teo girlfriend hoax? These two teams have met up 20 times since or over the last decade, and uh, South has won 17 of them. Here's some extra sauce for a year. It was 17 straight wins for South before the loss to North. During that 17-game winning streak, South scored 55 goals and gave up nine. All good things eventually come to an end. North, donuts in the goal column against PD, and then against the Peninsula Panthers. Uh, well, they get in on the party, dropping North again. Uh, that's now two straight losses. The Saxon. Their first losing streak of the season. As for South, not a win, not a loss, but a good old draw. The Spartans 7 0 3 against the Seahawks in their last 10 meetings. More prep score or more prep scores from the pitch. Ambassador High School, a private school established just three years ago. Go Rarless. They are the Lions. That's where that reference comes from. Against Weisberg and Da Vinci. 11 0. Yikes. To the, uh, to the only other Torrance area private school, Fish Montgomery. That's now the fourth straight loss for the Knights. Same sport, different gender. The black and gold boys back in the wind column, allowing a big fat zero against Inglewood. That's a 1-0 shutty, their second of the year. So we have gone from the hardwood, where the North boys and the North girls won, then to the pitch, where the North girls won for the first time in 10 years. A North boys win would mean a Saxon parte reaffirming the end result of the actual American Civil War. South outscored the Saxons in their two meetings last year, 6-1. to one. There's Igor Gasaldi and co. Uh, exchanging some high fives with South. Let's pick it up in the second half. North up 2-0. Excuse me. North is not up 2-0. It's 0-0. Uh, free kick for South. Big stop by the 10. He's still donuts. Then Igor Gasaldi from the corner. And then Malik Branch. Tries to settle it, and that goes wide of the net. Still zeros, and then still in the first, uh, we have no score. Gasaldi's kick gets deflected up and then uh, gobbled up by the South Tendi. And then another corner for South. Mm, no. That's as close as it was going to get, though, while our cam op was there. Donuts at recess, but South puts up one in the second for the 1 0 dub. The Beatles said, All you need is love, and the Spartans are saying, All I need is one. South slams the door shut 1 0. In their last three games, South allowing big fat zeros, two of them. Rounding out your prep news from the pitch. hey oh, Torrance shuts out the Warriors for their first win over West since the 2013-2014 season. I've run up and down the basketball court and run up and down the pitch. Obviously, I'm figuratively speaking here. I need an electrolyte drink and a protein bar. When we come back, I'll get you the latest on Nike Juarez prep wrestling results and more. Get your popcorn ready. Hi, this is Officer Matt Harvey with the California Highway Patrol. And I'm Betsy Totten with Caltrans. We want you to be prepared for driving in heavy El Nino storms. And always slow down in bad weather. If a road is flooded, try to find an alternate route, but never drive around barricades. Less than a foot of water can move your car. Standing water can damage engines and stall you far from safety, so slow down. If your vehicle stalls in the roadway, exit the vehicle immediately. 
In the event of an emergency, call 911. Be storm ready. Welcome back, everybody. Check out our Instagram page. That's the Sports Desk TV for cool pics, video, and some awesome filters. Some sad news. Former Torrance Little League manager Jimmy Ryan passed away recently. Over the years, Ryan was a big supporter of youth baseball and a big contributor to Torrance Little League and Torrance National. He continued to help out as a coach and manager until his passing. It doesn't matter how old you are or how old your loved one is, losing someone close to you always hurts. Not forever, though. Time heals all. On behalf of the entire City Cable family, our thoughts and prayers are with the Ryan family during this difficult time. To the wrestling mat now, the West boys in action at the A6 SoCal Challenge. The Warriors finish in eighth place out of the 66 teams participating. Amir Alinigian, Nathan Lima, and three other Warriors place in the process. And down south, the Spartans and Tadas meeting up on the mat. South Torrance drops Torrance, literally 60 to 24, opening up league play on the right foot for the Spartans. Switching gears now, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl brings in the creme de la creme, or cream of the crop of high school talent in the entire country. And this year, North Torrance senior Mikael Juarez was a part of the game that has produced the likes of Odell Beckham Jr., Patrick Peterson, and a Bama running back, roll tide, Derrick Henry. In total, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl has produced 238 NFL draftees, 62 of those first-rounders, and of course, an overall one overall pick according to reports the all-purpose stud has narrowed his college choices down to two schools plus a visit to Bama so technically three Juarez is set to visit college football power Alabama later this month but Bama isn't even in his top two right now it's Ole Miss and UCLA it appears as if USC is now totally out of the running February 3rd that's the day the world finds out where the all-purpose stud will take his talents Next year. While Mike tries to figure out where he'll be taking his talents, all of you should take out your smartphones and start hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag a boom sauce. Show me your school spirit from games all over town and I'll get you right here on the show. A big thanks to everyone who hit me up this week. There's Santize at Santi or at Santize Zoistic. I think this has to be the sauciest play of 2016 so far. Uh, yeah, that's David Singleton dunking over uh, a Narbon player. And then, yo, we're going to roll this video again for you. Singleton, boom sauce. I'm going to do that again because you don't see that often in high school hoops. And then, yeah, we'll roll it and slow it down one more time. Singleton, you the man. Nice work. Thanks again to everybody that hit me up. hey -o! That's another show in the books. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And remember, if you just want to say what's up or chat about sports, you can do that as well. Take it easy, Torts. We'll catch you next time.